Hey guys, what's up? It's Mick Guy, and today we're going to be creating an Apple Catcher game in Scratch 3.0, which is the new version of Scratch. This is going to be a beginner level game, just so you guys know ahead of time. So the first thing we're going to go do is go into our costumes and X out both these costumes because we don't need them. So we're going to add a new costume. We're going to choose an apple, double click that, and now we have the option to X and delete that other costume. Here we're going to press this button, which is going to let us choose from the library. We can search up bowl, and here we go. Now we have two different sprites. So our apple is a little bit too big to fit inside that bowl. So what we're going to do is go into events, drag in a one flag is clicked, go to uh, let's see looks, and set size to 60. As you can see, the bowl is now bigger than the apple, so the apple can fall into the bowl. What we're going to do is we're going to go to and set the bowls X and Y at the start of the game. So we're gonna drag in a one flag is clicked and then go into motion and drag in a go to. Now the X is gonna remain zero, which is in the middle, and the Y is gonna go to negative 130. So we can have a round number. Now, in order to make this controllable with the mouse, there's only a couple blocks that we need to add. We're gonna go into events and scroll down a bit, which is in control, drag in a forever, and in the forever, we want to go to motion and drag in the set X to zero and actually set the X to that of the mouse. So what this is doing is if we click the green flag, you can see that the bucket or the bowl, sorry, it's going to follow the mouse wherever it goes. So this way, when the apples are falling down randomly from the top, we can just kind of catch them in this bowl. It's a pretty short uh, piece of code, which you guys can copy as well. We're going to stop the game. And also you can see that if we drag it up here and we start, it's going to return back down. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go into Sprite 1 and we're going to have this looks uh, block, which we can set separately. But what we want to do is we're going to drag in a one flag is clicked and we're going to say forever. Then what we're going to do is uh, say wait one second. And in this one second, we're going to create a clone of myself. So clones are basically just, well, hence the name, it's a clone. It's a duplicate of what you have, but it's not creating an actual new sprite. So you can code these by saying, when I start as clone, and we're going to go to motion, and say, go to x, y. We're gonna change this from x, we're gonna keep at a random number, but y we can keep at the top, which I believe is 180 and we can keep it 190 so it looks like it's actually falling. Then the X, we can go into operators and drag in a pick a random. So pick a random and we can change it from negative 200 to 200. So it's on both sides of the screen and it's not touching the edges either. So now you can see they randomly spawn but they're not falling. So what we're gonna do is make them fall. However, we first notice that we have this random apple sitting in the middle. Now you might wonder, well, what is the point of that? We never set the Y to lower than 190. Well, it turns out that this, this is the spawner apple. So the not a clone, but the actual sprite itself. So in order to fix this and make it hide, we're gonna go into look, scroll down a bit, drag in the hide when flag is clicked. So we can put this in this one, actually, and show it as soon as you start as a clone. So go and then show. There we go. Now you can see that they're going to spawn at the top. What we're going to do next is we're going to say repeat until, which is going to be in control. And under the show, we're going to say repeat until, go into operators, drag in a less than, and change that to, uh, I think, neg uh, negative 180. Let's do that. And we're going to drag in a Y position. So y position here change y by negative three now we're going to eventually set these all to variables so we can change them and i'll explain what that means in a bit but here we go so we can see we have these falling apples now the amount of apples that come every second is also stagnant and the speed is also a constant so that means that they're remaining the same there we go so that's going to be it for this part and the next part we're going to be uh making them so you can catch it and maybe adding score Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.